Howdy there folks, this is Lapidary Dave, and right now I will be carving this beautiful piece of pink Kona Dolomite with stromatolite. This stone is from the Kona Hills in Marquette County, Michigan, up there in the UP. Kona Dolomite with stromatolite is a uh, pretty awesome stone. I saw it for sale on Kingsley's North when I was doing a little bit of research on it. They're selling it for about five dollars a pound. Um, they were saying how you can like slab it and use it as a clock. <laughs> I bought this particular material from a gentleman who vends near me and mine at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. He was selling this material, some sandstone, uh, some onyx, and some uh, Michigan native copper. He told me that um, back in the day, he would sell this material to the hippies near the Hopi Reservation, and they would make pipes out of this material. This was over five pounds. Uh, he didn't have any pipes, so I made him one and gifted it to him. He offered me some stone, but I have enough for now. I'll bug him about it next year. Um, yeah, he was a great guy. I paid about $5 a pound, maybe a little bit less, and I found out that he got it from this gentleman who became my friend, and I didn't even know that he sold it to the guy. Greg Laskowski. He uh, was so kind to write this down for me. <laughs> There's his number. Hit him up. Uh, get yourself some pink cone of dolomite with stromatolite. This material carves fantastically. A little too hard to drill with steel, uh, but you could use simple, cheap diamond burrs like uh, this little guy or whatnot, like I used to make the pipe. But uh, today I'm going to make a pendant. Awesome. Greg is a great guy. He is a fantastic lapidary and can do some amazing things with a scroll saw or a ring saw. Check him out. Hit him up. Find him on Facebook. Tell him that I sent you. He's a great guy. Yes. So, Stromatolite says the Kingsley North website is 2.1 or 2.8 billion years old. And uh, it was an algae, algae, green and blue algae. Uh, it says another website. Yeah, beautiful. Some of the, definitely some of the oldest of ancestors. A friend of mine told me that maybe they had some kind of role in making oxygen for the planet. Don't know much about that, but that's beautiful. Thank you, Stromatolite. Some good medicine here. The red here I saw on a uh, different website goes by the name Moose Blood Dolomite. I wonder if the pink stuff is the stromatolite and the red is the dolomite. I don't know. But let's carve it. I'll see you folks over there in the studio. I'll be slabbing this up here another day. All this brown here actually, um, is when I cut it on a high-tech brand lapidary saw, uh, someone before me cut a big hunk of slag ore that they found, some old some old Mexican-Spanish slag ore, and they cut that stuff looking for gold and silver, and it left a big, dirty spot. But I'm not upset because I'm going to carve that and cut that. If you're wondering what that craziness there is... <laughs> Alright folks, I'll see you folks in the studio. It's the garage. Alright folks, I'm here at my little Lortone two-wheel grinder. I love using my vintage machines as much as I can, and today I definitely can. This stone is softer than quartz and jasper, definitely harder than fluorite and calcite. Uh... A little bit harder than some of the softer amethysts I've carved, but definitely harder than um, a lot of soapstones and other things I would associate with soft. 
it works and drills a lot like the stone I have that is called African Butter Jade. A little bit softer than uh, quartz, in my opinion, when it comes to carving, but is a little bit more responsive uh, when drilling. Anyway, that's the stone dry. This is the stone wet. I'm not sure how I'm going to shape it, but uh, yeah, here we go. It's going to be awesome. Stone from the UP. Alright folks, this is roughly my shape. Looking fantastic. This stone, um... Definitely uh, was pretty easy to carve when, with my uh, Kent's Tools diamond wheel. I dig in really deep with that wheel. If you can see, there's some like sh like stone shrapnel all over me from digging in really deep, so it didn't take so long. So now I'm going to go to this 80 grit um, silicon carbide after that 80 grit diamond. This is kind of like my 280 wheel on my diamond machine. This wheel takes the longest. But after this, everything is really downhill. And after this, I will be drilling the stone. So, yeah, I'm going to get on it. All right, folks. This is pretty much the finished preform. This took a lot longer than I uh, was expecting, but uh, the way you dig in to silicon carbide is a lot different than the way you dig into diamond. At first, I was treating it a lot like diamond and not putting any pressure on it at all. Then I remembered I have to dig in a lot deeper to get the same results as I would with the diamond. And uh, by the time I f figured out how to work my silicon carbide wheels again, I was already finished. And it took a lot longer, but anyway. No excuses. We're all good. There's the back, and here is the front. Let me try to dry this off for you folks. This is the front dry. Pretty glossy already. This finish left by this 80 grit silicon carbide wheel is a lot like um, the 220 grit wheel on my diamond machine. All right, folks, I am now back. I marked this stone roughly with the yellow Sharpie. Uh, I'm now gonna drill the stone. Wish me luck. Alright folks, that went very well. Pretty dang awesome, if you ask me. Um, yeah. Real quick, before I go on to the 220, I'm gonna go ahead and lick the hole with 80 grit silicon carbide again. Um, just to tighten up any blowout that there might have been. I don't see any. But, um, yeah. See you folks over at the 220 grit. Okay. So folks, because of some technical difficulties, I lost the footage to my 220 grit. Um, the biggest difference is between the 80 grit hard wheel and the 80 grit silicon carbide. Um, not too much to see between 80 and 220, but it is a shame, and I am sorry. I could go ahead and lick it again with 80, and then to show you the finish and then do it again, but since the hole is so high up there, I don't want to remove any more material. And I'm sorry. So this is my 220 grit finish. Still a few facets. The 220 is pretty sharp, even though it leaves a um, nice finish. On to the, to the 600. Then 1,000, and then I'm going to hit it with the mop. It's going to shine like glass.
All right, folks, I'm back. I'm gonna hit this with the 600 grit silicon carbide belt. Alrighty. All right, folks, that is my 600 grit grind. Looking way pink. All of those um, facets left around the sides are gone. I don't really know if you can tell. But, um, yeah, let me dry off the other side. This side with the big piece of moose blood dolomite is the side that I pretty much consider the face. Uh, There, I dried off that little piece of moose blood. Dolomite, looking nice, a little bit more red. So the stone in general is a little bit more pink and smooth. Uh, on to the 1000. This is my last grit. Then I hit it with the mop. And on stones that I would even use this machine for, these stones that are definitely softer than a six on the hardness scale, I almost can't even tell the difference after hitting a thousand and then going to the mop compared to using um, a 3000 grit wheel on my diamond machine and then hopping over to the mop. Perhaps because it's softer, it just takes a better finish in general. I don't know. I love this stuff. Beautiful stone from the UP. Anyway. Enough rambling. All right, folks, that was way fast. That's the 1000 grit dry. Fantastic. I could leave it alone, and it would be fantastic. Um, I am going to take it over the top, though, and hit it with my mop on my Easy Cab. My Easy Cab doesn't have any wheels on it right now, but I can use the mop. Bam! Man, this is awesome. This stone is. Uh, about like just uh, under two and a half inches. I'm definitely going to braid this up when I'm done so that she hangs in all the right places. Anyway, off to the mop. Alright, folks, I'm over here at the mop. Some kind of loose buffer pad thing. I saw some British dudes call it a mop, and I like calling it a mop. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be using good old Fabuluster. Yeah, you got to be careful that this stone doesn't go flying. I should have some kind of like basket ready to catch it with like a nice cushion or something, but right now I don't. I just have the uh, concrete floor to catch the stone. Anyway, I'm going to do this. I'm going to rid my respirator so I won't be talking too much. Safety first. So, here's the 1000 grit. That looks pretty good. I like the matte finish. But when you take it to the mop, I can't tell the difference if I took that to 1000 or 14000 before I took it to the mop. And that goes to show that a silicon carbide machine can work just as good as a diamond machine if you're willing to um, work with it and understand how it likes to work. It does carve a little differently than diamond, and you just got to know about it. It does take a little bit longer for me, at least. Anyway, that is fantastic. I, I'm happy. I'm going to go ahead and finish this off. It's not over till it's over.
And here is the other side. Shining fantastically. I am so happy. I'm going to see you folks inside. I'm going to go ahead and braid this up. So I'm definitely going to be wearing this, sweetheart. And then I'll show it off. See you folks in there. All right, folks. Here's that finished piece of pink conodolomite with stromatolite. I uh, polished it to 1000 grit, then licked it with the mop with some Fabuluster on it. Took a fantastic polish. Right before I made this outro, I found um, this piece that I carved on Facebook. I used the diamond machine, and if you look, without burnishing, the finish is pretty much inferior. This is 3,000 or closer to like 8,000. And this is definitely shinier than that. It goes to show if you know what you're doing, you can get just as good um, of a polish as, as a diamond machine could provide. Anyway, if anyone would like their own pink cone of dolomite with stromatolite, hit up Greg. He'll hook you up. This material is awesome. Here's a piece with like a vein of like quartz or barrel or something. That's exciting. I wish I took a picture of the pipe that I made out of this for the old man that sold this to me to support his story about the hippies near the Hopi reservation <laughs> and their pipe making. Anyway, folks, this is Lapidary Dave, and this has been carving a beautiful piece of pink Kona Dolomite with stromatolite. This material is awesome. Softer than quartz and agate, harder than fluorite. Love you folks. See you next time.